Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 636. Why does BioBalance Health require a vaginal ultrasound before treating female patients? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about one of the tests that I require of our uh, female patients before they come to see us for their very first visit. Let me, let me back up a minute and say that for all of our patients, we try to save them time and money by asking them to get some preparatory testing so that we can tell, first of all, whether our, the patients that want to come see us actually will be helped by our treatment if they need hormones. And we can tell this by looking at three things. One is their history, their medical history form that we ask them to fill out for us. And that includes medications. That includes their previous surgeries, their previous um, diseases, their previous problems that they've had with hormones. Um, several other things. Do they have cancer? Have they ever had that? things that impact whether we can take care of them and whether they actually need uh, what we can do with hormones and anti-aging treatments. We also, as our second requirement, we also uh, order lab tests, blood tests, uh, so that we can look at hormones and we can also look at um, different signs uh, that are seen in the blood to see if this treatment would be dangerous for a person, or if they can even have hormones. So that plus, we also look at general health. We look at certain things that impact hormonal treatment and certain things that hormonal treatment impacts in terms of diseases. So we not only give our patients the foundation of hormone replacement so that they uh, get their quality of life back and their health back, but we also try to counter any diseases that are starting, that are just beginning, that we can see in the blood work. We want our patients to be healthy, and to do that, we need to know what is going on individually in each patient. So that's the second type of test. Women have to do one extra test that men don't have to do. Women have to get an ultrasound of their pelvis so that we can see if they are actually candidates to get estrogen. Many women don't have a uterus, and if you don't have a uterus or you don't have ovaries, then you don't need to have an ultrasound of your pelvis. We know that there's nothing there, and that there's nothing that would preclude uh, or prevent you from having uh, estrogen. Uh, Testosterone, it doesn't matter. Testosterone doesn't affect the uterus. So it is very much about estradiol and estradiol pellets. So for women who do have a uterus, we have to get a picture Basically, a picture is worth a thousand words, and we want to see what is going on with your uterus, your ovaries, the lining of your uterus, because that is very sensitive to hormones. We also want to know if there's any other masses or abnormalities like fibroids in your uterus, because they are sensitive to estrogen too, and they can often grow when exposed to estrogen. We need to know all of these things before we see you so that we can have a treatment plan ready for you when you walk in the door. So we look at these three types of tests for women, and we develop a treatment plan based on your individual needs. We even look at diet, develop a diet and exercise program as well. But all of these individual type treatments require information from you to us, and that's that's the basis of why we ask for these tests. The second part of why we ask for these three tests is that we want to be very efficient. We don't want you to, I had an experience like that this week, going to a dentist. 
we don't want you to have to come in and talk to us for an hour and not get any treatment, but then be sent out, wait, come back, and then we would then look at lab like other, uh, other folks do. They don't order the lab until after they've talked to you for a while, then they order lab, then you come back, then they do something. We like to try to speed things along and have a treatment plan ready for you. And I'm not saying that it is unchangeable because many times patients will tell us things that aren't on their history or we will see things in their ultrasound or on their lab that actually change what we uh, want to do with them. But we talk about it. So we are trying to get the show on the road. And to do that, we have to have the information up front and then pretend I looked at a lab there was nothing wrong. Not one thing wrong. A woman comes to see me. She's not in menopause. She doesn't have symptoms. She's, she doesn't have anything that tells me that she's missing testosterone or estrogen or progesterone. Her lab looks great. She has almost no symptoms or no symptoms. Then, and her pelvic ultrasound is perfect. Well, there's nothing for me to do. Why would I take her money? to come see me for an hour for that. That makes no sense. So she's not really a candidate for what we do. She's probably not old enough. She probably is not, um, is not really looking for treatment. She's just curious. But that isn't, I mean, she can read my book or listen to HealthCast to um, actually help her curiosity. But honestly, in those cases, we will then send the results of the tests back to a patient and say, you're fine, we, we don't need to see you yet. You're not old enough, you don't have enough problems. Take these tests to your primary care. And then they will use those as your yearly tests and they will see that yes, you are healthy and that will reaffirm your um, treatment with them, showing them that you're healthy. So they've succeeded, basically. So if you do have problems, then we have a, a series of things that we will help you do. It's a partnership. We make the plan based on our knowledge, based on your information, and then we go over the plan with you and you decide, yes, I want to do this. No, I don't want to do this. Can we do something else? Can we adjust this treatment? That's fine. We have that conversation. Then we finalize a plan and then we treat you with the hormones that you need and then make an appointment for four months later and other lab and you come back and see us and a, you're usually much better, you're usually feeling better, you've usually got more muscle, your mind's working better, your symptoms are better. Uh, so we have then freed you up from one appointment that didn't do anything. We like to do something for you at your appointment so that you actually feel better and actually know more when you leave. So that's the whole, that's the big picture. Um, so when we do this, the one extra test that many other places don't do is the ultrasound of the pelvis. Now, I can tell you that we can tell a lot of things about um, a woman's pelvic organs, ovaries, uterus, cervix, um, and lining of the uterus, and fallopian tubes from, the, from an ultrasound. We can find abnormalities or we can confirm that yes, you're normal for a cycling woman or yes, you're normal for a menopausal woman, but we uh, actually don't want to, we have to know if you're menopausal or not. So one of these things, one of these um, ultrasounds, is it's necessary to know if you're really menopausal and we get that information not just from your history, but we also get that information from your laboratory. So we need your history, your history questionnaire. We also need your lab and we need the ultrasound for us to actually interpret what the ultrasound really means. So what do we discover from an ultrasound? And let me say that this is not just an ultrasound through your abdomen. This is an ultrasound that looks up close and personal to your uterus and your ovaries. It is a vaginal probe, is, um, looks a little bit like a vibrator, but it's not. It is an ultrasound 
uh, device that actually goes into the vagina and looks at your ovaries, looks at your uterus, takes close pictures, and very and can tell if the lining of the uterus is thick or thin. It can find all the other abnormalities or differences in your uterus that might cause bleeding in the future. So we want to be able to tell you, oh, you have fibroids, or oh, you have uh, a polyp, you need to get that fixed. And and that means you go to a gynecologist and have the polyp removed. It's very, that's very simple, but we want to be able to tell you what is going on with your uterus when you are seeing us and what your risks are of bleeding in the future because that is an important side effect of estrogen. Any kind of estrogen can cause a woman to bleed. We give you progesterone, natural progesterone, so that it balances estrogen to decrease your risk of bleeding but every woman who takes estrogen and has a uterus has a chance of bleeding postmenopausally. So you need to know that, and we believe you should know that. So that's why one of the reasons we have the ultrasound. But what we look for on the ultrasound, what we're trying to rule out is endometrial cancer, a cancer of the lining of the uterus. We're also trying to rule out endometrial. Endometrium is the lining of the uterus. That's another word for that. Endometrial hyperplasia, meaning a very thick lining, a, a lining of the uterus that's abnormal, that is actually very thick and ready to bleed. So it looks to us and tells us that you are a very high risk of bleeding if we put you on estrogen. We can see polyps on the inside of the uterus. They look like little punching bags that are sitting inside the uterus, and we can see them. And that is, that's one of the things that we see ahead of time and say, oh, hold on, you don't need to come see us yet because we can't treat you with estrogen if you have endometrial cancer, if you have endometrial hyperplasia, or if you have a polyp. You need to see your gynecologist first. So those are three things that we can look at and right there say, mm, you, you need to get tested and you need to have treatment by your gynecologist. So those are, are pretty basically black and white issues if we can see those things uh, and, and something that would actually delay your treatment. We also can see fibroids, which are benign muscle masses inside the uterus that can cause bleeding in the future or they can grow. And if they grow, sometimes they cause pain, they cause bleeding. They actually can get big enough so that they have to be removed because they're just obstructing the bladder, the, your bowel, it ends up being just a, a problem from too much mass sitting inside uh, your uterus. It's not cancer, it's just a mass effect. So you feel full and, and your abdomen actually pushes out because you have a uterus that's about, sometimes they're 12 week size, like a 12 week pregnancy or up to 20 weeks. And when it gets that big, some people need to have a hysterectomy. And, um, that is something that you and your gynecologist will talk about specifically if we find some big fibroids. If we find little fibroids, they usually don't do much. Sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't. We, we can't tell you that. We can't give you a look into the future. But we can tell you that there's a risk of that. We also look for ovarian masses, cysts or masses on the ovary. If they're small and they're clear, they're usually not a problem. If they are large and they have blood in them and they look twisted or they look irregular, those can actually be something that is bad and needs attention as soon as possible. So an ovarian cancer might look like that. And it would also usually be accompanied by fluid in the pelvis. Like there would be a lot of what looks like just water around the ovaries, but it's, some, it's different than water. Uh, and it needs to be taken care of by a specialist, which would be a gynecologist who has an oncology uh, special uh, specialty. Uh, the last thing, I mean, there are other things that are very rare, but the last thing is polycystic ovaries. We can look inside the abdomen and find ovaries that have cysts all over them, and that's usually in women who are not menopausal yet, who are still in the fertile stage of life, but they're having trouble ovulating, they usually have um, abnormal uh, blood levels of their hormones. They have a lot of adrenal 
androgens, not ov not necessarily ovarian testosterone, but adrenal androgens that gives them facial hair and body hair. So we can actually make that diagnosis by looking at it with an ultrasound. So these are the things that we use the ultrasound to determine, but we need to know a couple things. We need to know if you're menopausal or not. And sometimes we can't tell that unless we look at your laboratory. So to make a good decision about what we're looking at on a, in a report from the radiologist, we need to know if, if you have stopped having periods for good or if you're perimenopausal, you're in between, or if you're still having cycles and you're still fertile. Those are all things that we have to know to be able to interpret this. So um, this is what we do before we actually see a patient, but oftentimes we'll order this same test during your treatment with us if you're menopausal and we're giving you estrogen and you start to bleed and we try different things to stop you from bleeding and you don't stop. So if you continue to bleed, then we order an ultrasound and we look to see if the lining is thin, because you can bleed from thin lining, which means not enough estrogen, or you can bleed from thick lining, which means too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. Now, I can give the same dose of estrogen and progesterone to two different people, and one can absorb it differently than the other, and one will have too much estrogen and the other will not. So it is very individual, and so we have to look at this picture. And usually the pictures aren't sent to us. The radiologist sends us a report and tells us how big the uterus is, how big the ovaries are, do the, does the uterus have polyps or fibroids? It tells us what the thickness of the lining of the uterus is. And that is, the normals for that are based on whether you're menopausal or not. Now, most of our patients are menopausal. We're giving them estrogen. That's why we give them estrogen. So in general, after we have seen you for uh, the first time, we know whether you're menopausal or not. But we judge the lining, the thickness of the lining, based on whether you're menopausal or not. And we measure from one side of the, uh, the uterine cavity is like, um, it's like an empty space, but when you're looking at it and when you're living your life, basically the two sides of the uterine lining, they touch each other. So when you have an ultrasound, it looks like three lines, and we're measuring from this side to this side. So we're really measuring the thickness on one side of the uterine lining and the space in between and the thickness on the other side. And that is um, that is actually what the radiologist is going to call the endometrial thickness. So um, I'm going to put a I'm going to put a picture up of here. There's two little A's and in between it is the lining of the uterus. Now According to the American College of OBGYN, if you're menopausal and you're bleeding, you should have a lining of four millimeters between those two sides or less. If you have a lining that is thin, less than four millimeters, then they have determined that you, it can't be cancer, it can't be precancer, so you're okay, you don't need a biopsy, you just need either more estrogen or more progesterone. So it's not cancer, it's not something severe. Then they have also determined that if you're menopausal and you get an ultrasound for a different reason, say you have pelvic pain, and you have a lining that is between zero and six millimeters, then you can't have cancer. So that is considered okay. You don't need more treatment. You don't need a biopsy. You don't need a DNC. However, the reverse is true. If you're menopausal and you're, and you're bleeding and your lining is thicker than four millimeters, you need a biopsy. That's according to the College of OBGYN, which I'm a part of. They basically have done the, run the numbers and found that if you're four millimeters and, and less than four millimeters, then it's not cancer, so we don't need to biopsy you. If, they if we find that you're more than that, then you have a chance of cancer, so we need to make sure it's not that. So you can go into 
your, we will send you to your gynecologist. We don't do that procedure. We're no longer acting as gynecologists. We are hormone specialists. We send you to your gynecologist. They do an in-office biopsy with a tiny little straw, and they suction out tissue, send it to pathology, and ask the pathologist, what kind of tissue is this? Is it normal? Is it benign? Or is it cancerous? Or is it precancer? So that is the next step after we find a thick lining on someone who is menopausal and bleeding. The same thing happens if you're menopausal but not bleeding and we just accidentally look at the lining of the uterus and it's thick. We send you to your gynecologist who does an uh, endometrial biopsy and sends that to pathology to see if it's normal or not. If it's normal, then we're pretty much back to square one. You didn't have any symptoms. And we, in general, will increase your progesterone or will decrease your estrogen. Or if this bothered you so much emotionally, then some people choose not to have estrogen and just take testosterone. And that's up to you. That's your choice. We usually advise you that you'll feel better if you have some estrogen, but we can always make the dose very low. So this is why, if you, if you heard me, we have to know if you're in menopause or not. We have to know some other things. We have to know if you have diabetes. We have to know if you're obese. We have to be able to measure, weigh and measure you. Uh, we have to know if you have um, uh, immune suppression, if you have autoimmune diseases and are taking medication that suppress your immune system. All of those things can increase your risk of having uterine cancer. We have to know if you're diabetic or not, or pre-diabetic, uh, because those are risk factors for endometrial cancer, or also called uterine cancer. So that's necessary for us to find out on your history sheet and to talk to you about at your next visit. So we are trying. <laughs> in a very organized way to keep you from having unnecessary visits, but yet we're trying to get you the right treatment right as fast as possible, not make you wait to see me for me to tell you, oh yeah, you need to see a gynecologist, and then you have to wait for the gynecologist. We will contact you, and if when we have all your information, we have your lab, we have your uh, history, and we have your, and, or excuse me, your ultrasound. Then we can say, yeah, we have a problem, or no, we don't. So if you don't have a problem, then we make your appointment, and we have you come in and see us and talk to, us, talk to us about hormonal treatment. If you have a problem, then we're going to tell you what to do, where to go, who to go to. Usually it's back to your own gynecologist with this information, and then they'll take it from there. I want to say one other thing about diagnostic treatment. Sometimes an endometrial biopsy is not possible in the office. To get to the lining of the uterus, you have to go through the cervix, and sometimes the cervix after childbirth or after an infection or after a surgery like a, cone, like a laser cone, your cervix is, is scarred shut, and we can't open it so that we can put that little endometrial straw through to get tissue out. So... We then have to take you to the operating room for a very brief uh, amount of anesthesia to relax your pelvis, relax your cervix, and keep you from feeling pain. And your gynecologist would dilate the cervix, and that's easy once you're asleep and you're not in pain, uh, unlike what it's like in the office. So they'll dilate, and they will look in there with the hysteroscope, which is a camera, and they'll look for anything that's abnormal, and if it's abnormal, they'll biopsy it. And then they'll usually curatage or remove all of the lining of the uterus so you can start over again. Basically, they'll clean out the uterus. And then you can start making lining again, but you're not having to deal with this thick lining that tends to bleed and drip all the time. So it does kind of give you a, a, a new start. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to give you usually less estrogen, more progesterone to try, try to keep that from happening, or we're going to, to uh, adjust your medicine for your diabetes, or we're going to keep you from having uh, any of these other, we're going to try to treat these other problems that can complicate um, 
problems with the uterus and can cause uterine cancer. So we don't want you to have anything like that. So we're being proactive, trying to keep you from having any kind of problems with your uterus. Having said that, if you did have a problem that was precancerous or cancerous, your doctor will talk to you about different types of treatment. But usually it, has, it involves removing the uterus. And in menopausal women, our uterus doesn't do anything except cause trouble, basically, because it's done being the uh, womb for our babies, and it is just there, and it's sensitive to estrogen, so it always has the chance of causing bleeding if it is actually in your, in your pelvis. So sometimes a hysterectomy is indicated. Only your gynecologist will be able to tell you that. And that is, our job is hormones, their job is everything else that's gynecologic. So that's what they do. That's their specialty. So we will always defer to your gynecologist for that type of treatment and send you there for biopsies or uh, D's and C's or any other kind of treatment. We'll take care of the hormones. So I hope this helps you understand why we do what we do. We're trying to be very careful. We're trying to not miss anything. We're trying to keep you healthy and get you treatment that you need quickly uh, if we find anything that's wrong. So thank you for listening. I hope this helped you understand uh, what we do at BioBalance and why we do things a little differently than other people, which means that we require more testing because we don't want to miss anything. So we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.